The refugees are telling their stories to another American, Samantha Power. She's investigated ethnic cleansing in Sudan, Rwanda, and Kosovo. Last year, she won a Pulitzer Prize for a book, A Problem from Hell, America and the Age of Genocide. What is the evidence that this is, in your estimation, ethnic cleansing, and in the word of the U.S. government, genocide? When the Janjaweed come in, and there is interaction between the Janjaweed and the local people, the Janjaweed are shouting ethnic slogans. They are saying, you blacks, you zurga, sort of a sl like, a, like the equivalent of nigger, get out, you're slaves, you're hyena, never come back. Uh, when rape is committed, often the same epithets are issued. You're going to give birth to a light-skinned child now. They see their task, those who are racially motivated, as one of purification. The death march of that purification runs through some of the hottest, driest territory on Earth. This summer, Power and John Prendergast crossed the desert with us into Darfur, and we saw just how difficult a journey that can be. When it's dry, the sand gives way like water, but when the rains come, riverbeds called wadis fill with nearly immovable mud. So this is the Sudan side of the wadi. This is Darfur. A lot of people are coming down through this way, and a lot of people don't make it this far. No, there are an untold number of Darfurians who are stuck. Um, we encountered some of them as we drove eastward, and they said, if we had the means, we would get to Chad. We're too sick, we're too old. Please tell people to send help. 500 of those people used to live in the village of Hengala, but in January, everything that could burn here did burn. They go in here and they destroy everything. Men, women, children were driven out, dead or alive, by the Janjaweed. Sudan's military government is telling the world that it's reined in the Janjaweed. But outside of a town called Farawiya, we found bodies of evidence that suggest otherwise. In July, anti-government rebels showed us what they say is proof of continuing mass murder. The first thing that greeted us was the smell of decomposing flesh. And then, as we walked further up the hill, we saw almost blending into the sand uh, the bodies of men who appeared to have been executed. Most of the bullet holes seem to have entered from the back, either the back of the head or the back itself. But uh, the thing that I found the most haunting was that one of them had clearly made a run for it. And he almost looked like he was pleading for mercy. One of his hands was outstretched. The living are still pleading. This man is asking for food, clothes, and in his words, justice. <laughs> In a landscape dominated by desolation, we found refugees still on the journey to the camps. That tree on the right throws a few square feet of shade, and that is home for 14-year-old Nasser and 16-year-old Mohammed. They crossed into Chad the night before we found them. They told us that their father, uncles, and brothers were all killed, and their mother is missing. They've been in hiding for eight months, living on rainwater and whatever else they could find in the foothills. The shade of the Noor tree was their last stop before the refugee camp. With new survivors swelling the camps, the threat of cholera or hepatitis rises with each refugee. Infants like Irega are most at risk if disease begins to finish off what the government of Sudan and the Janjaweed have started. A million people could die by what might be chalked up to natural causes, when the cause isn't natural at all. Exactly. This won't look like Rwanda. If a million people die in Darfur, we'll all sigh and say, isn't it a shame we couldn't get medicine to those poor, sick Darfurians, as if they were poor and sick to begin with. 50,000 people have died so far. That's 50,000 too many. But when we know there are between a million and two million who can yet be saved, what is our excuse for watching this happen in slow motion? Power and John Prendergast think there should be a large international force to impose peace in Darfur. Last week, several African countries offered a few thousand troops, but there's no telling when or if they will actually hit the ground. In the meantime, the World Health Organization estimates another 6,000 people die every month 
in Darfur.